We are with Dr. Rick Foster. He is the director of the Michigan State University's Greening Michigan Institute. And what's extremely exciting is that they've proposed building an urban agriculture research center in the city of Detroit. Dr. Foster, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you, Nadia. It's good to be here. So tell us, what is the goal of this project? Well, the goal of the, uh, the project is to uh, look at the future of Detroit, uh, look at the what has been our liability in abandonment and, and blighted conditions, and how do we turn that into a condition where we look at a future where we grow our own food in a high-quality way that is equitable and that is affordable and green. So give our viewers a little bit more understanding of what urban agriculture means. Well, urban agriculture, we, we use the word actually metropolitan agriculture, but urban agriculture ten, generally means agriculture and food that is grown within a city's limit. Uh, we are looking at the global applications of this work, and the global applications, we think, is when the gr food is grown in the city, around the city, and even between cities. So the rural areas around Detroit are uh, as equally important in growing food for the city as is the internal uh, resources. So we use metropolitan. Okay, so speaking of Detroit, why is this city a good place to start a project like this? Well, you know, Detroit is like many other cities around this country in that they are, it's a post-industrial city where much of the urban core has been hollowed out. People have moved to suburbs and left sometimes blighted conditions. And the way that we think that we can start to assist in the development and the redevelopment of such cities is to utilize abandoned lands for food or for energy or for returning to nature and use abandoned buildings for vertical agricultural uh, structures to grow food uh, in, a, in an indoor setting. And I think this is going to be the future of not only Detroit but many, con many, many global cities around the world. Vertical agriculture sounds kind of George Jetson-y to me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it could be a little George Jetson in, in, in ways because the people who are employed in this are not your common agricultural workers as we know them. Actually, they have to have science and technology skills. They have to have monitoring and regulatory skills because of the, uh, the um, environmental controls of the heat, of the nutrient movement, those sorts of things. The kinds of systems that have been developed thus far have primarily been in Europe and they've been intensive growing in indoor systems that uh, controls energy and water. If I could uh, suggest uh, the future in the 21st century is that the issues that we will need to contend with as a as, as a globe, as a planet, is about food, energy, and water. And if we can get them where they are integrated in indoor systems, we all of a sudden can uh, grow more food and do it with less energy and less water than we currently use. And that's going to be good for the planet. I couldn't agree more. Now, I understand one of your other goals is to collaborate with some community partners in Detroit. Obviously, there's a lot already happening here. So how do you plan to do that? Well, Detroit is a very exciting place right now. There's a lot of community-based urban agriculture going on um, in, in, this, in the garden space and in, in small commercial ventures, etc. We hope to establish a small footprint for Michigan State University as an innovation center here. But we think that the real innovation actually happens in community. And so we want to be partners with those who are in the community garden area, in the commercial area, those who have hoop houses, but also larger growers who will come into Detroit because the opportunity to grow food and market it is an important part of their strategy. So we look at a diverse set of economic models of uh, local to commercial. Now, does the Greening Michigan Institute have any other projects currently happening in the Detroit area? Uh, yeah, we do. Um, we're, we're looking at, um, we, we have a considerable number of projects to look at how we take food from farm to institutions. So, for example, uh, we think that the Detroit Public Schools and, and their foresight have already decided to uh, source as much of their food for children from local sources as they can. So one question would be is how do we link growers in the region with institutions who need the food? And we know that uh, good health, so Detroit, um, the public health systems here, um, they have said many times that the first prescription to good health is good food. So how can we start to source locally grown foods to those institutions who benefit most from it? We think that's a ready-made market. It uh, increases the quality of food that our kids and our, and our um, uh, elderly can, can, can utilize. But as importantly, it creates a demand and we have an economic 
uh, development impact from the ground up. Well, Dr. Foster, this sounds so exciting and thrilling. We are so grateful for the work that you are doing, and we wish you luck with this urban agriculture effort. This is Natalia Petrozak reporting from the News Hub at Eastern Market. Back to you, Dave.